Every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up. It knows it must outrun the fastest lion or it will die. And every morning in Africa, a lion wakes up. It knows it must outrun the gazelle or it will starve. And it doesn't matter if you are a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you better be running. And my friends, there's no other person I can describe who is fast, alert, and who seizes opportunities better than Rick Picard. Let's get him, Rick. Joe and Julie for having me. Let me say a few words here. First of all, who am I? Well, my name is Rick Picard, and me and my wife Monica were from Coventry, Rhode Island. I have five beautiful children and two grandchildren. I know it's tough when you look 35 years old to have two grandchildren. <laughs> I do. Two beautiful grandchildren. So me and Joe talked a little bit about what I was going to be talking about today. We came up with the topic, selling when your prices triple your competitor. You know, to tell you the truth, I had to chuckle a little bit. And here's what I said. Yeah, right. I knew some people were going to say that when they read that. And the reason I knew that is because that's exactly what I said when Joe told me that I had to triple my price. I went, yeah, right. Well, let me tell you a little story about uh, a, a meeting with Joe eight years ago. I almost didn't meet Joe. Um, he didn't come to see me. He was hired by a company I'd worked for to work with the service technicians. And I heard this hot shot sales trainer was going to be in the building. And I figured since I was a salesman, I might as well stop in and see what he had to say. Well, I had been to all the other um, sales trainings. I'd been to the boot camps and I'd been to the other kind of training, which I don't have a lot of affection for. You know, like put the pen in the customer's hand and put the paper here and, you know, make him say yes all these so many times. But what Joe was talking about really made sense to me. He was talking about scientific things, about why people buy and how they buy. And the more he talked, he says, boy, that, that, that sounds like that, that might work. That sounds good. So I asked Joe if he'd do a favor with me. I'd ask him, he was going to be there for a couple of days. If you could take a little time and come ride with me and see if you could help me at all. So what happened was we, uh, we did some sales calls together and the subject of price came up. Joe said to me, you know what, Rick, your price is way too low. I said, what do you mean, Joe? I mean, I'm $3,000 for an 80% furnace. All my competitors are $800 to $500 less than me. You know, how can I get more money? He said, well, Rick, the company can't afford to pay you your commission at the rate you're selling. Well, that caught my attention. I mean, I, I, they can't afford to pay me? Well, <laughs> that's, just, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so then I said, well, Joe, what should my price be? He said, your price should be triple what it is now. And I said, yeah, right. So then Joe gave me a challenge. You know, I had heard a lot about my price having to be higher from a lot of people, but there seemed to be a, a great shortage on how to do it, right? But Joe challenged me. He said, would I be willing to adapt a new, a, a new strategy? So we talked a little bit and, bit, and Joe sat down and he said, I just wanted you to do four things in the next call. And he said, I'm not going to waste my time telling you about these four things unless you really want to hear about it. I'm like, yeah, Joy, I'd like to hear about that. He says, you're sure, because I'm not going to show it to you unless you're not going to do it. I said, I, oh, yeah, I really want to show it to me. He says, I'm not convinced. No, Joe, please. Now, anybody who knows Joe, you know this is true. Please show me this new strategy. He said, all right, these are the four things he said I, he wanted me to do. 
Uh, I promised him I would make sure I was talking to all the parties that needed to be involved. I needed to present at the right time. I needed to create at least six options. The options needed to be from the most premium to the most economy, including more service and warranty for the most uh, premium ones and just bare bones on the economy one. And the economy one would be the price I was selling at now. That was it. So I told Joe I would try in the next call. Now when I told uh, Joe I would try, what did he say? Yeah, right. I don't try. He said to me, I wrote it down here, you're to say don't try, do. If you know Joe, you know that's what he says. So my next call was a, was a man called Mr. Rose. I'll never forget Mr. Rose. No, that's not him, but his name was Mr. Rose. Joe, did you put that in there? <laughs> So, but I never forget Mr. and Mrs. Rose, because it was my very next call I went on. And you know what I did? I made sure I was talking to all, all the other parties involved. I, I presented to the right people at the right time. I made six options, the most premium at the top, all the way down to the most economy on the bottom. And I made sure I got a yes or a no at the end of the call. Those are the four things Joe asked me to do. So, the question is, what happened? Let's get some input. Who thinks what? Anybody know what happened? Let's take a guess. <coughs> Anybody? What happened? Go ahead. Okay. So what happened was I, I said, Mr. Rose, here's my top option. It's twelve thousand dollars. Here's my next option. It's ten thousand. My next option is nine. All the way down to three thousand. Well, Mr. Ra Mr. Ra Rose bought a $9,000 furnace for me. I went, what? It was exactly triple what my price would have been if I didn't talk to Joe. So I said, you know what, maybe there's something to this Joe Cacera guy. I, I'm not the sharpest guy, so I mean, there was definitely something to this Joe Cacera guy, right? Well, just to give you a little history. In the first eight years that I had with a salesperson before I met Joe, I sold, let me go back and look, it averaged about 1.7 million in sales a year. All right, so that was $14 million worth of sales in those first eight years that, before I met Joe. Now, you know, back in 1997 to, 90, to 2004, those are some pretty good numbers, wouldn't you say? They're not bad, all right? Well, in the next eight years since I met Joe, my average per year was 4,600,000. Uh, 50,000 per year. So, in, so <laughs> instead of selling 14 million, I sold 37 million 200,000 from 2005 to 2012. I sold 23 million more in the, in the second eight years than I had sold in the first eight years. All right? So, the reason I wanted to bring that up is. What's different about Joe and Joe's system is that he doesn't only tell you what you need to do, he shows you how to do it. And that's what I learned. So that was really, for me, an aha moment, what you say. So a lot of times people ask me, you know, you really preach Joe's system. And, you know, how did you and Joe get involved? Well, that's the story. I had an aha moment when I was willing to open my, my heart and my mind so maybe a different way. So, I decided I would do a little bit of a case study. And I, st I figured I would show you how I've been doing it uh, instead of just telling you how to do it, all right? Now, I'm gonna show you this as a, a typical example, all right? Let me tell you about a customer. The name is Mr. Mrs. Glittenstein. Now, I picked this particular one. It's a very typical thing that happens. But the reason I picked this one, because it was my favorite kind of lead. What's my favorite kind of lead? It was even better than that. It was a competitive tech lead. All right? So I'll tell you what happened was, one of my competitors went out, one of their customers in Concord, Massachusetts, and said, yes, your furnace is dead. You got two furnaces in the basement with AC. One does the second floor, one does the first floor. And the heat exchange is cracked, you need a new furnace. And it's $4,000. Okay. Well, the customer said, well, that's great. Now, let me call my husband, Kurt, Mr. Dr. Glittenstein. 
Uh, our company says we need a new furnace is $4,000. Okay, fine, let's get some other estimates. So they called out three other people. The next competitor came out and said, Mrs. Glittenstein, you need a new furnace. We can give you one for $4,000, one for $6,000. The next competitor came out and said, Mrs. Glittenstein, we can give you a new furnace for $5,000. Then I showed up. So, Mrs. Glittenstein, I'm Rick Picard, nice to meet you. What's going on? Well, I need a new furnace. I say, hmm, why do you need a new furnace? Well, it has a cracked heat exchanger. It went my whole thing with her. I said, so if I was a guest, Mrs. Glittenstein, it's only you involved with this. Oh, no, not really. I'm gathering information and supplying it for my husband. I said, oh, I, I can appreciate that. I said, no, let's take a look at things. So, let Mrs. Glittenstein, when I look at your furnace, I mean, how old is the furnace? It's 25 years old. If I was a guest, me and you and Mr. Glittenstein are the type of people that like to wait for things to break and go without heat or have some kind of comfort issue, maybe be without air conditioning, before you fix things. So you wouldn't want to hear anything about a total solution to replace everything in the home at the same time. You just want me to focus on this one furnace. Is that correct? Well, to tell you the truth, you know, it's really been three days now I've been getting estimates. We've been without heat on the second floor, and it's really quite aggravating. So I guess if you could put something together to show us how to replace everything, we'd probably take a look at that. I said, that's great. I said, so uh, when is Mr. Glittenstein going to be around? Well, he's a doctor, and he works really, really hard. So I would like it if you just gave me the information, and I would give it to him. I said, well, here at our company, we believe we have a, we have a passion. And our passion is for world-class customer service. Now, there's a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things. The right way would be for me to prepare all my solutions to you, for you, because believe it or not, you know, I'm going to have uh, maybe half a dozen different solutions for replacing everything, and then I'm also going to prepare a solution just for replacing the furnace for you. I said, so the right way is for me to put those together, come back and talk to you and Mr. Dr. Glittenstein, in case you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. The wrong way is for me to put together my solutions, present them to you, ask you to do my job and present them to Dr. Glittenstein, and then him have a question and hope that I give you enough information that you can answer his question. All right? So, should we do this the right way or wrong way? Well, Rick, I can really see that there is a right way and a wrong way to do it, but you know, he's really, really busy. So when, when you come back and see us? I said, how's Saturday? Is Saturday a good day? Great. He said, now, you sure want to wait till then, because I'll come back late this evening. I have 10, 11 o'clock, I don't care. Whatever is convenient for you. Because you know what? World-class service is when it's convenient for the customer, not me. She said, no, Saturday will be fine. So Saturday, I went to Mr. and Mrs. Glittenstein's house. I called on the way. I'm going to come. Yes, Dr. Glittenstein is here. It's an hour and a half away to Concord from where I live. I got there. Where was Dr. Glittenstein? He got called in an emergency. She says, I'm so sorry you called all this way. You came all this way. He's just missed Kurt. He was driving on the street. He just got called in an emergency. He had to go. So maybe you could give me the presentation. And I'll, and I'll give it to Mr. Glittenstein. I said, remember I told you about the right way and the wrong way? I said, uh, you know, when's he going to be home today? Well, I, we never know. He is a doctor. I said, well, how about tomorrow, Sunday? Would Sunday be a good day? He said, sure. All right, we, you know, you don't mind coming on a Sunday? I said, remember, great service is convenient for you, not me. So you're worth me coming out on Sunday. So I came back on Sunday and met with, Mr. M with Dr. and Mrs. Glittenstein. Now, in that situation, what are the four things that I did? I made sure that I was talking to the right people at the right time. I presented at the right time. I created six options. And now when I was meeting with them the next day, I was going to make sure I got the yes or no. Oh. Oh. Okay. So when I met with the Glittensteins, this is the presentation. It's the actual presentation that I made to them. So I said to Dr. Glittenstein, I really appreciate that you've given me the opportunity to come and speak to the both of you. I've prepared some solutions for you. Now, I have solutions for the total house renovation, as me and your wife spoke about, but don't worry, I also have a, a whole solution package produced for just the furnace, if that's all you want to do. So I started out with my Rodenheiser Platinum Plus plan. In the plan, there was going to be two new adaptable heat and air volume furnaces. I'll zip right through this. There was $3,700 in rebates between max manufacturer and state rebates. Two new indoor cooling sections, two new adaptable to AC sections, two new two zoning systems, uh, new custom fit energy transmission connections, fuel power combustion removal systems, two equipment protection systems, two pure moisture delivery systems, 10-year uh, price warranty, 10-year labor in-service warranty. 
So for the next 10 years, Dr. Glittenstein, I'm going to take care of this. You're not going to have to worry about anything. We're going to come twice a year. We're going to include all media pads and filters. I'm going to make sure that you're all, you don't have to worry about anything. 